What's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. This is actually my second time filming this video because this concept was just hurting my brain and I felt like I was not explaining it the right way. So we're back at it. We're back. We're hitting it again. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about quantum immortality. If you don't know what quantum immortality is, it's a theory that everything that can happen in a given situation does. So for example, let's say there's a situation that can end with me either stubbing my toe or not stubbing my toe. It's thought in this theory that the universe will actually split into two parallel universes and to accommodate each outcome, which would mean that in one parallel reality, I did stub my toe. And in the other parallel reality, I didn't stub my toe. And this happens with things like death too, okay? So this quantum immortality was proposed by Max Tegmark in the year 1997. And he was like some scientist dude, obviously. And the way he explained it was, imagine a gun being hooked up to a machine that measures the spin of a quantum particle. The spin can either be clockwise or counterclockwise. And if the spin is clockwise, the gun will fire. And if it is counterclockwise, it will not fire. Consider a man pointing this gun at his head. He pulls the trigger and hears an empty click. He pulls it 10 times and yet still hears the same empty click. So basically, the reason that he used this is because pulling the trigger has two possible outcomes, okay? He either lives or he dies. So it's thought that each time the trigger is pulled, the universe splits into two to accommodate each scenario that can happen. So when one, the man dies, okay? His family freaks out. They run in. They're like, oh my God, like he just died, you know, because death can be real for us, okay, not experiencing it. But that man would be unaware of that. He would be shifted to the reality where he didn't even die. He wouldn't even have known and he would not be aware that there's another reality where he died, obviously, okay? So it would be like such a quick shift into another reality that he wouldn't realize that he died in another reality. So that is the quantum immortality theory, basically saying that if you die or there's a 0.1% chance of you living from an outcome, there is at least one universe where that happens. And that's where your consciousness will be shifted to for you to continue doing what you're doing, right? So some of the evidence that is used to back this theory up is the double slit experiment. Now, if you don't know what the double slit experiment is, it's basically an experiment that proves that light moves as either a wave or a particle, depending on whether or not it's being observed which basically means that if we're watching something, it acts differently. Kind of like the whole, if no one's there to hear a tree fall in the middle of the woods, does it like make a sound type of thing? It's like, if there's no one there to observe it, things are acting differently, which also feeds into like the simulation theory. And it's kind of like the RAM of a computer. It's like, it seems that it's almost like generating what we need to feed someone observing something, if that makes sense. And and if there's like no one to observe anything, it's not going to waste the energy to be rendering that almost. So it's like, it's kind of like the proof that like, it doesn't exist unless you see it because it, it wouldn't make it exist. So like outside this door right here, I have a bathroom, but that bathroom doesn't exist because there's nobody to observe the bathroom right now. So it's like, why would it exist for what? But as soon as I walk out the door, the bathroom's going to have to exist because it needs to like feed my simulation type of thing. Okay. So that is the whole theory behind that. But there's another experiment that not many people know about that also kind of deals with the double slit. And it's a variation of the double slit experiment. And this is where it gets even crazier, okay? Because a lot of people know about the double slit experiment, but not a lot of people know about the variation that they did on this experiment. So the variation that they did, they called it the delayed choice experiment. And this basically at the slits, just the normal slits that they use in the original double slit experiment, they place these special crystals that splits incoming light into two different identical like photons, basically. So the light will split, okay? And one photon from the pair should go on to create a pattern while the other one travels to a detector, okay, to detect it. What they got from this is that Regardless of when the detection of the other photon happens, even if the second photon is detected first, okay, it ruins the interference pattern. This means that observing a photon can change events that have already happened, okay, already happened. That freaking blows my mind, dude. So 
it, it proves that like it, it's like basically time travel like in a way in a weird way it's, it's happening very quick but it's like it would be like if i threw the tennis ball at the wall and it like went through the wall but then i looked and then it and then it like bounced back off the wall type of thing you know what i mean like now that i'm observing it it has to it, it changes how it's acting like what actually happened is now being changed because i'm deciding to observe it if that makes sense which blows my mind dude that blows my mind and this is this is proven like this is a real thing this is this part is not a theory this is just science okay this is quantum physics whatever mechanics you want to call it but this is like a real thing that things that have already happened can change based on if we're witnessing them or not which blows my mind dude the whole theory is that there's so many different timelines and things happening that you'll just keep being shifted into different timelines over and over and over again and this is where the Mandela effect comes into play because a lot of people think that this is proof of the quantum immortality theory, okay? So if you don't know what the uh, Mandela effect is, I have a video on that. So I'll put the video in my description on that and you can go check that out. But I'm sure a lot of you watching probably know what the Mandela effect is. Basically, it's like weird things that people remember being a certain way, but it's supposedly never been that way. So for example, like... One that I can think of off the top of my head is like the Monopoly man. If you guys played like Monopoly as a kid, you remember uh, the dude, he had like a monocle, right? That's how I remember him at least. Some of you might not. I remember him having a monocle, okay? And I played Monopoly as a kid. I remember the monocle, okay? He had a monocle. The Monopoly man had a monocle, okay? But he doesn't have a monocle. Like he doesn't. If you look up pictures right now, if you don't believe me, I'll put a picture up, honestly. This is what the Monopoly man looks like. I thought he had like a monocle, honestly, I really thought he had a monocle. So what some people think happens is since we're constantly shifting into all these parallel universes, that small things are going to change. It's almost like glitches. And, th and they think that that is proof for quantum immortality. So these glitches, maybe there's a possibility that when I was growing up as a kid, I was in a reality, a parallel reality where the Monopoly man did have a monocle. Something happens, I die, let's say there's a, I get like ran over by a train or something, okay, and I die, and I come, I, I switch, instantly switch, I wouldn't have even known I died, I would switch into this alternate reality, okay, I switch into this alternate reality, I continue living, I don't think anything's up, I don't even notice what's going on, but then next time I go to play Monopoly, the Monopoly man doesn't have a monocle, and then I'm like, wait, whoa, you know what I mean, like, I swear he had that type of thing, so it's like, there's a possibility that this could be proof. These little glitches could be proof. And there's so many Mandela effects. I think I'm going to make an updated video on like 2022 Mandela effects or some that a lot of people are feeling. But the weird thing about Mandela effects is that can happen on an individual scale too. So the cool thing about like the Monopoly Man or some of these big Mandela effects that we all know about is that it makes you feel less alone because people can like relate to what you're saying. You know, some people are like, no, I also remember it being like that. But I've had things in my life personally where like just like my brother can relate. You know what I mean? He's the only one. And we both are like, that's crazy. I don't remember it being like that. But no one else would be able to re relate to it. You know what I mean? Because it's just like it's like something that we go through. You know what I mean? So that is when it gets weird because it's like now you can't really tell if you're losing your minds or if these are like little Mandela effects happening for your life. So it's like if you're like you ever like 100 percent sure that you put something right here and you're like, there's no way that it's not right here. Like, I remember putting it right here. I remember it being right here. And then it's like across the room in a different side. And you're like, I didn't do that. Maybe you just moved it and you didn't even realize it or maybe you really did put it where you thought it was and you switched into an alternate reality where it wasn't there. It's like a glitch in the matrix type of thing, okay? So that's why they think that the whole Mandela effect can kind of be proof of that. And I will say, after all the research I did, I am definitely open to this theory, dude. It is definitely interesting and it definitely like gets my brain going because I wonder if it could be real, you know, because there's really no way of knowing that we would re like if it would actually be real or not. But the other thing, this is another sort of view that people can have on it, where basically, even after you split into all these different realities, eventually some people think that it'll get to the point where you've done every single reality, you've switched into every single one, every outcome that could possibly happen for you happened. And some people think that when you finally do all of these things and, and make it to the last basic timeline where you're alive, then 
when you die in that one, it would be basically final death. Once death is unescapable, some people think that you will finally be able to reach a final death. So, you know, which kind of takes away the whole immortality part because then you wouldn't really be living forever. But that's another view that people have on it. So, you know, there's really no way to know. But I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do you guys think that this is a real thing? Do you think you've died and maybe switched realities? Do you think this is all just crazy talk? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace and love. Thank <laughs> you.